Hello, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts, and my breed study this time is Blue Face Lester. Now, just give you a little history lesson on the Blue Face Lester. It's a long wool breed, of course, and you know how much I love long wool breeds. And it was developed from a, well, I want to call it an experiment. But there was a gentleman named Robert Blakewell, and his goal was to uh, increase the bodies of the meat breeds in England. And so after breeding, crossbreeding, and interbreeding several different types of breeds, um, he developed one uh, that was called the Dishley uh, Lester, and the what we know as the English Long Wool Lester and Disney Leicestershire. That's where he was from. And so from those breedings, um, the Blue Face Lester was developed. So he didn't directly develop the Blue Face Lester itself. He developed other Lester breeds. And then through those breedings, the Blue Face Lester was uh, developed from basically improving uh, the market of the meat breeds at that time. So now, the name Blue Face Lester, if you've never seen a Blue Face Lester sheep before, is because they have a bluish, dark bluish skin underneath the wool. And most of the BFL sheep produce a white wool, although there are recessive genes for colored wool. And somewhere in my stash, I have some gray, uh, Blue Face Lester. Now, um, let's talk about the micron count. So normally you get between 24 to 28 microns, and which is basically very soft and wearable against the skin. And you know what? That makes me want to go through and look at the other Lester breeds. I'm pretty sure that that's a lower count than the uh, English Lester. And I can wear, for the most part, English Lester against my skin. So the Blue Face Lester is softer. And I've, I've made socks with the Border Lester, of course. So this is a softer version of those two. Uh, the staple length is generally up to six inches. And the rams weigh about 250 to 300 pounds. And they use about 150, 200 pounds. They're known as docile, easy to handle sheep. So if you're considering looking for a sheep to breed, and I know some folks who are, these guys sound like they're about perfect. Nice range and weight. Uh, they're dual purpose, wonderful, soft fleece. They're easier to handle. Uh, the average fleece weight is about two to four pounds worth of fleece. And more importantly, when I was doing my research, it noted that they have clean heads clean legs and so uh, you don't have to worry about sharing that part so sounds great I saw like a great group of these so I have this right here and this is from my stash from knit fairy so unfortunately I can't tell you a great deal about this particular fleece I have no idea where it was um, grown sometimes in the knit fairy documents she left notes as to where it came from or there are tags from the where she purchased but this particular one was not the sample has already been washed for me now i know as far as like the lester long wool you know it didn't seem to be a heavy grease fleece the fin which is also long wool is very greasy so I need to find out exactly how much grease there's in a fleece for the uh, Blue Face Lester. But if it's anything like the English Lester, it's not a really heavy, greasy fleece. I don't think any much, any of the long wools really are except for thin. Okay, so it's a really nice staple. Look at this one. And somewhere mentioned between three to six, I guess it depends on when you share it, how often you share it. But that's a really nice staple in it. And it does feel really nice and soft. And it's really nice white fleece. Very little yellowing as far as I can see. And what's on the tips here 
it's just probably washing and that will probably wash out too. Now, uh, I so hate carding these curls because they're just so lovely. Uh, but in this case, they're not quite the same curly form as the English Luster. So I'm kind of okay with this. I'm not going to lock spin it. I am actually going to card it or flick it. And I got my new hand carders from the Howard Brush Company. They just came in. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to card these guys. Or flick them or it, I guess it depends. So I should have my book in front of me. Uh, so after I do this, I'll lay out the book for you and show my tracking. So we just set this little guy aside. Hi, little guy. And this is going to go inside my book. It's pretty represent, you know, pretty good representation of what's actually happening with this fleece. And as you can see, my sample size is really small for this particular one. It, you know, it just depends. Sometimes I, I get it out small samples. Sometimes I get really big samples. Uh, it just depends. But this one is a small sample size. So this one is going to be a small project. And more than likely, uh, let me move this so I can put it on the carter. More than likely, I am going to spin this um, as lace. Because you know what? The long wools just bag to be spun as lace. They just do. So more than likely, that's what I'll do with it. Turn it into some kind of shawl. Uh, when I lay these guys down, you know, because I am by habit a worsted spinner, I usually lay them tip. So I'm just going to lay them all tip in this case. And uh, also, well, you, of course, this is a little softer, but I'm not going to spin them hard worsted. Don't really need to. But let me just give you an idea. Oh, that one's wrong. You can already see how that's fluffing out. Look how nice that is. Beautiful and fluffy. This one just insists on not coming off the carter. Okay, there we go. Got you. Okay, now. Look at how beautiful and fluffy and dreamy that is. This was a very well done fleece. I'm not seeing a lot of short cuts it's a few neppy ends over there and that's probably just because of the washing because the long wools do felt they felt marvelously actually so when you're washing be careful with them okay look at that a little neck just a little spot right there I could probably card that out like I said I don't even think that's a short as much as it is, yep, it's just a nap from being washed, and it works out just fine. So this was a beautiful fleece. Uh, whoever shared it was really good. And I could really just pull this stuff right off like this, which is what I do a lot of times. I don't even cart things all the way. And I just spin them just like this. And I'm still, uh, you know, kind of tip to tip here, even though I fluffed it up just a bit. And this would be wonderful. Or I could card this into a roll egg, which would be cool too. But I think maybe that's all the processing I'm going to do. So I'll go ahead and put this on the wheel. It's been quite some time since I've done any spinning and I found that my bobbins were occupied. So I just laid a little bit of interfacing over top of this Jacob and decided to spin. 
there's uh, not a big amount in this sample so I didn't really feel it was worth to take anything off of the bobbins. Now if you're curious I'm using the second of the two whorls that came with the ladybug and this is the smallest of those two whorls. I don't actually know what the ratios are on this whorl but that doesn't really matter much to me. Um, I'm used to the Louette where basically I left it on the largest whorl and just spun and I control the thickness of the yarn and the amount of twist with my hands just like I would with a spindle uh, on how long that I hold it and also um, how much twist I allow uh, into the single. So I really don't change the whorls very much. Just treadle faster or slower. Now I've decided I'm going to spin this as a single because I want to stretch the amount of yardage as far as possible. And also I think I want a really nice thin lace weight yarn to do some lace work with. I'm going to spin this in my usual worsted way. Not too hard, just enough to make it nice and smooth and I am going to use a short forward draw so I'll get to the spinning okay so I have to ask you to forgive me be for the camera being a little shaky but I'm holding it now because this is really the only way to get a shot like this uh, the tripod would be in the way so uh, long wools BFL is deceptively easy to spin you know well I feel that way a lot about the long wools because they're really smooth and they just kind of glide out of your hand they seem like they're gonna be complicated but they're not and you know just kind of put an easy twist into it it doesn't have to be hard twisted even though it feels smooth it will catch on to itself and it just feeds out really nicely Look how nice that is nice and soft and it will oh there we go check that out it still holds up real nicely as a single you don't have to twist it into twine and you can already see that nice halo peeking out of it It's a nice peaceful day outside and I decided this is a good time to film the rest of the video for the breed study. Now it's been a long time since I spun the single. It's just pretty much been sitting on the bobbin because I hadn't decided what to do with it. Um, I, Between the time that I spun the single and now I acquired a circular sock machine it's a New Zealand auto knitter. I've been using it, of course, to make socks with commercial sock yarn. And I thought I'd try feeding the single through the sock machine. Now, if you've never seen a sock machine, it has those steel needles that clasp onto it. And it's also weighted down. So the big question is whether the single could handle the weights and whether or not it would have trouble being fed through the, you know, the iron mast and then down into the needles. And it actually handled it just fine, except for one hiccup, which was actually caused because it's a single and it was a little over twisted in some places. And I actually, I thought I didn't put enough twist in it. When I was looking at it, I thought to myself that I was gonna have to ply it or spin it again because I didn't put enough twist, but actually it was perfect. And it was a little extra twist, so I got a few pigtails in some places, which still fed through the machine easily. And it was one thin spot, and I wasn't paying attention. And I kind of pulled that, but I was able to get everything back together. 
So here's how it turns out. What I didn't do was count the yardage, uh, which you know is one of those things I don't always do because I tend to knit things straight off of um, the bobbin all the time. But I got uh, 283 rows. And so it's probably about uh, 120 something yards or so roughly um, from just based on my sock calculations and how many rows I get from, you know, 200 yards or so of sock yarn. So that's, that's pretty close to that. It was a really small sample to begin with and it came out this really nice, cute, thin scarf. And I put little pom-poms on the end. Now, one of my friends suggested that some of the things I could make with the circular sock machine are little thin sock scarves. And you know, I'm accustomed to like big, long wraparound scarves. And I was like, oh, uh, I've never seen anybody with those little skinny scarves. Or at least I didn't when she mentioned it. And I was like, well, I'm not really a fan of that. But I did go to Pinterest and start looking at some of those sock yarn scarves made with the sock machines. And they were really cute and I really like this I could see myself making quite a few of these I turned up the tension pretty uh, low watch well, this I turned down the tension really low and uh, this is cute it's a nice width and I can really see this working especially with the Angora yarns so I'm spinning up an Angora single to make some of those and I want to get some faux fur pom-poms for this part Okay, that is the end of the, the breed study. What I do want to say is, I know a lot of people have said that this is next to the skin soft, and it can be like any other fibers, there's a range in the micron count. So I don't really know what the micron count of this fiber is, but for me, it wasn't really next to the skin soft. But I also have to say that people say kitten mohair is next to skin soft. And no matter what mohair I've gotten, I've gotten some like 18 micron count mohair and it still made me itch. So just because it doesn't feel this way to me, I'm not going to discount it because it could just be like the mohair and this makes me itch. And to be honest, a lot of times Angora makes me itch too. The prickle factor, even with the softness, just kind of makes me itch. So it's just one of those things. Other than that, uh, this is really nice it has a really nice feel to it a really silky feel um, with my hands uh, it wouldn't work on my face as a hat where it would touch my face but I could put it around my neck of course I could wear it with clothing uh, I just like the feel and touch of it let me see if I can get a little closer I don't know how to zoom there we go it's better and uh, I just I kind of wish I had dyed it so you could see how well I know it would dye up but I have dyed sock yarn uh, with this and so uh, there's some pictures on my Instagram of that. I didn't use a sock yarn myself but I did dye it and so it just it dyes up wonderfully. But I like it in the natural. Okay, thank you everybody. This completes another breed study and I'll see you again later on. Have a great day.